on the 6th of March. Linda Roberts woke up about 6 o'clock in the morning, went to check on her father, Anthony Tomaselli. She didn't think there was anything wrong with him, but it wasn't until her sister, Mary Beth Tomaselli, did a closer inspection of him, noticed that he was unresponsive and started uh, yelling and screaming, and she called 911. When the paramedics arrived, uh, Linda Roberts was doing CPR while Anthony was on the couch. EMTs took over, placed him on the floor because it's a much flatter surface. They tried to resuscitate him, but they were not able to do so. And he was pronounced deceased at the scene. Linda Roberts, she advised that they had all gone for a trip to the beach, and they returned back home and sat on the couch for some length of time, and Anthony Tomaselli fell asleep on the couch. It looked like Anthony Tomaselli just died basically of old age. Mary Beth Tomaselli virtually gave the same story that Linda Roberts had given, so there was no conflict in their statements between them. Once it was determined at the scene that there was no foul play, the body removal service responded, and eventually his body was cremated. Anthony Tomaselli's case was closed within a few days. Anthony Marsh called the sheriff's office, talked to the sergeant of the homicide unit, and basically said um, he had some information about uh, Linda Roberts actually having confessed to him that she and her sister, Mary Beth, had killed their father in 2015. And during this confession, Anthony Marsh turned on his phone recorder and recorded the confession from Linda Roberts. He said that he plays a guitar in, in local establishments and the sisters to come in there to see him several times. And he is on friendly terms with both. I appreciate you coming in. I'm Detective Nelson DeLeon, and this is uh, Mike Bailey. Bailey. So first of all, what I know you have your computer there. Did you say there's um, you have some audio of things? I have video. OK. It was like six of them in a little bit because he had a drink every night anyway. Who had a drink every night? My dad. I said, just put him in a little bit of alcohol, six, seven of them, and stir him up, because he was waiting for a drink. Uh. So what does she do? She makes a drink this oh. big. Mary Beth? Yes. Instead of making a little drink, she makes a big drink, because the, the seven ha uh, housing on would have been plenty enough to just let him go to sleep and and, and sleep peacefully. Because what is Halcyon? Halcyon to sleeping pill. We were surprised that she allowed him to have a iPhone pointed at her as she's talking about this murder of her father. It wasn't very covert. He had it on his leg and was pointing at her for some length of time. I just thought suspicious that she wouldn't have figured that out. We're glad that we had it, but we did think it was kind of odd. She said, if, if you tell anybody, I could go to jail. I said, no, you could, you, you could get lethal injection in Florida. Now, what are you doing? Planning on doing something to me? What do you mean? Because now you have me afraid that I knew I shouldn't have told you. No, I, 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 I... And my sister has asked me, did you, have you ever told, did you tell Anthony about that? I said, no, I have not. Why is she scared? Because she doesn't trust you. I can't believe that you you murdered. Not me, me and my sister. I can't believe Don't that you. Don't just on me. We made the decision together as an act. Do you know why you're here? Or, no. No. Okay. Well, I want to explain that to you. Okay. So your father's deceased, right? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, he had his companion died three weeks prior to him, and he had dementia. Okay. And my brother and sister and I all decided he was going to go there. Okay. So he didn't want to go there. Right. So he went to sleep, snoring away. 
And um, it was probably about 2, 3 in the morning. My sister said, why don't we go lay in Dad's bed and get some rest? He's sleeping, he's quiet. We said, okay. So we get up in the morning, about 6 o'clock, and I walk right past him, went into the kitchen to make some coffee, and my sister got up, and she went over and checked on him, and she yelled to me, something's wrong, Dad is not responding to me. Mm -hmm. So she called 911 and they came, and I was doing CPR on him, and they came in and they said, you need to get off your father now, we're going to continue. And I said, continue CPR on him, please. Her story was the same story that she gave in 2015, and I'm shaking my head probably during the interview knowing that this is BS because we've moved on so much further than this now. Like, it was time to move forward and be the pointing end of the stick. Okay, just let me just walk you through this a little bit, um, just to bring you up to speed. The conversation that you had with Mr. Marsh, yeah. we were listening to that conversation. Okay. Okay. Anthony was the only person that we were joking around and things were said. So we can cut to the chase that there was no joking about this. I have a digital crystal clear clarity, so you can read between the lines, okay? I actually had the same clarity with your sister. About, you talked to her? About an hour ago. We tried to give you ample opportunity to tell what happened, but now you know that I know what happened. So we're gonna cut through the BS, agreed? Agreed. Okay, now answer his questions. And let's move forward with this. Okay, do you understand? I understand, but you don't have to be rough with me. So, I felt very bad for my father that he was su suffering so bad. He was in pain, he couldn't breathe. So, we took him for a ride to the beach, and then um, we brought him home, and she took his sleeping pills. How many? I don't know. Probably put maybe 10, if I had to guess. So my sister and I, we started euthanizing him because now he, we have to finish it. Okay, and what'd you do? So I just got a hand washcloth and she held his nose. Mm -hmm. And what'd you do? And I put that washcloth in his mouth. And to block the airway? Block the airway. And you know the rest of the story. Um, we decided that we were going to put both Linda and Mary Beth in the same room together, which was being recorded, and see if there's anything to be garnered from this. Sometimes they say a lot of crazy things that they don't tell you during the interview. Yes, I had to tell them. Yes, I had to tell them. I told the police when we did it. I couldn't watch my father suffer that way. It had nothing to do with his money. Nothing. Oh, look at us. So we're going to jail. My life is over. So is mine. I'm surprised all of us in the same room together. a little bit older, 15 or 20 years could be a life sentence. I do believe that Linda was actually the, the ringleader in this, so I think that's probably why she got the higher sentence. This whole thing shouldn't have happened, but for Linda and Mary Beth, he eventually just became too much of a pain for them, and they decided to end his life, and that's a tragedy in itself.